Professor McKenzie, you discussed in your testimony the negative consequences of the filibuster on the confirmation process. One possible reform you mentioned is the resolution considered by this committee in the 108th Congress, Senate Res 138, and that resolution would have altered Rule 22 by placing a steadily decreasing threshold for cloture on nominations until after successive votes, cloture could be achieved by a majority. The lead sponsor of that resolution was Majority Leader Frist, and its co-sponsors included three current Republican members of this committee. Do you see any negative consequences with this proposal, and what if it were extended to cover all matters and not just the confirmation of nominees as Senator Harkin has proposed? Thank you, Senator. I, I don't profess expertise on all matters before the Senate, so let me just address the question of confirmations. I, 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 one can understand that there may be a time when a senator or several senators would like more time to contemplate a nomination. They'd like to get more facts. They'd like to carry through an investigation that hasn't been completed or something of that sort. So there may well be a time when postponing action on a nomination, whether it's through a hold or a filibuster, um, is appropriate. But the, where's the end game in all of that? If you see these uh, processes through the eyes of those uh, Americans who've committed no crime other than saying yes when the president asked them to serve their country, and they have no idea when the end game is going to occur, if it's ever going to occur, I think a process like the one that would have a decreasing majority needed to sustain a, uh, a filibuster or to bring, to bring it to closure um, would make a good deal of sense just to, to, to force those who wanted more time to use that time in some profitable way and get it done, and then let's have an up or down vote on the nominee. Now, Professor, you, and you heard a member of this committee say earlier that if we make any of these changes like you've just talked about, that, that we're going to turn the Senate into the House, and it's become exactly like the House. Do you have any comment on that? I, uh, it was the first time I'd ever heard the word freight train in the same paragraph with the Senate. Um, <laughs> that's not a fear that most Americans uh, kept awake at night uh, about. I, I, would ask, I would ask those of you who have to make decisions on this, what, what does a filibuster really accomplish other than delay and in some cases defeat of a nomination? Does a filibuster change people's minds? Does it convert doubters into supporters for a nomination? Uh, is there actual a debate that occurs on a filibuster that people listen to and are open-minded about? I, I think anybody who follows this body knows the answers to those questions are usually no, and that a filibuster is a procedural tactic designed to prevent or at least delay a nomination from being, from being confirmed. Um, that uh, is problematic for new administrations, it's problematic for old administrations, and it's certainly problematic for the people whose nominations are under consideration. Thank you. Tom, Mann, you, would you also respond to this idea that, that if we uh, change the rules, respecting minority rights, that somehow we're turning the Senate into the House? I do not. The, uh, the filibuster, the routine filibuster, was never uh, anticipated by the framers uh, when they purposely set out to design two very different institutions. The, the length of term, the method of appointment, uh, uh, the size uh, of constituency, they, they expected the Senate to, to be the saucer, uh, to cool the, uh, the hot tea or coffee of, uh, of the House, even without this. So I think there are other safeguards built into the system. Having said that, you can go a long way in adjusting the rules of the Senate without completely eliminating uh, the possibility of a, of a determined minority to, uh, uh, to stop some action in, in the Senate. Uh, it does not, uh, you can do many things short of a blanket major, ultimate majority cloture vote. Uh, Although I'm not arguing against that or for it, I'm saying there are many things you can do. You could say the nomination process to staff an administration is, 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 should be so routine a part of a new presidency or a new governorship that that's going on to a separate track. It's already on the executive calendar. Uh, you could set up rules that have a time limit associated with it, and you wouldn't have to go through the trouble of filing cloture motions. Uh, it seems to me there are various ways of, of making adjustments in the rules 
to confront the new reality that they are producing in this new world of polarized politics and self-indulgence of individual uh, senators, a very destructive pattern of uh, behavior. Thank you, Chairman Schumer. Thank you very much.